Hi there, just a quick recording to show you how to do a, um, a point of interest export from GSAC onto your Garmin Nuvi or Nuvi, however you want to say that. I've got here a, uh, a Garmin Nuvi 265W uh, which is connected up to my computer. So um, I, I guess the big thing to know that I learnt on the TomTom Tom, I think is that if you export um, geocache data as a GPX file there's a fair bit of information in there and you don't really need it for your navigator be a TomTom Tom or be a Nuvi or whatever it is I don't think you need all the detail that's in a GPX file like it has the cache name, the coordinates, the hint uh, the cache owner, the logs, who's found it, a whole lot of stuff about each geocache on your navigator be it uh, a Garmin or a TomTom Tom or whatever generally speaking you're really just looking for the name and the location so that it can drive you to the closest possible spot and then you're going to use your handheld GPS to get to the final um, GZ. So if you have a choice I would be exporting information from G GSAC as a, a POI, a point of interest kind of data file as opposed to a, I guess a geocache data file like a GPX file that we all know. So and my experience is that the, the navigators um, can handle a lot of points of interest so I think it would be quite feasible I certainly know for the TomTom Tom, I haven't checked this but for the Garmin uh, and the TomTom Tom to export um, points of interest files where you cover the whole of Victoria so like basically every geocache in the whole state and I, you may have been able to do it in the whole, whole country I don't know but certainly in the whole state whereas with a GPX file if you were to take your Colorado or whatever you have um, GPS and put a GPX file into that which had you know four or five thousand geocaches you would just slow it down so much it wouldn't be usable um, well that's my experience so like I said the point of interest file nowhere near as much of information um, and that's really all you need for your navigator so uh, in GSAC here I've got obviously a bit of data now one thing to to just have a think about for a moment is you've got the um, geocache code you've got the waypoint name and you've also got this thing that GSAC creates called the smart name, smart name. Now I must admit I don't really understand what the logic of the smart name is. I guess you can correlate the two. But the one thing that is interesting is that much in all this, you look at the geocache code and you go, that number doesn't make any sense to me. And when you want to go to a waypoint or when you want to go to a geocache, you're generally going to put that in by the waypoint name. So if you're out with a friend in a car and you're geocaching, you're going to say, let's go to the um, you know, white lands cutting as opposed to going to GC one, you know, one zero six PY. But these names, uh, you know, when you create a geocache, as we probably all know, you can sort of use any name you want. I guess there's a limit, but you can, you can have some really long names. And so on your screen, um, as you're driving around, if you've got a map view or you're looking for something, sometimes those names can be a bit long. So whilst we're humans and not computers, and it's better to use human readable names as opposed to GC codes there's actually a lot of merit I think in using the GC codes so I guess for my mind I'd probably be fairly keen on just putting the GC code in it's faster and easier as well but I know people want to use these waypoint names so that's what I'm sort of focusing this around today but the thing you've got to be aware of is this smart name so like I said I don't understand Clyde's logic in creating these I'm sure there was some good logic going behind it but basically, the thing I do like about these smart names is that they're fairly short. What are they, about nine nine letters or so short? So it's kind of more in, in line with the actual name of the cache, but it's uh, somewhat human readable as opposed to a GC number. So we'll come back to that. So just bear in mind, that's your smart name. And in GSAC, uh, every geocache has a smart name associated with it. So like I said, uh, smart names are a GSAC only thing. Uh, on geocaching.com there's no concept of the smart name it's just something GSAC does um, uh, I guess as some sort of unique identifier but my point is that they're integral to the GSAC uh, database so clicking over to the TomTom Tom, you can see here on the on the Garmin Nuvi I've got a couple of folders I've got this one called GPX um, now I can actually stick a you know like if you've got a Garmin Colorado or whatever that takes GPX files you can actually whack a GPX file into here um, and it does seem to read it from my experience but um, I think the way to do it really is to use the POI files when you put the GPX file, I'm just trying to think, I did this twice when you put the GPX file in there 
you can only see the cases I think from memory based on their um, their GC identifier, you know, GC106PY for example. So you can see them there as custom points of interest I think from memory and you can look them on the map and you can see them but the information is not that great. It's it's like, you know, this structure of having this Garmin folder and this GPX folder is very similar, in fact it's almost identical to the Garmin Colorados and I think the Oregon's the same. So it's kind of like you know, Garmin have said, well, we need to keep that structure across all devices. So they've put it there. But I think really, you know, the, the newbie is a navigator. So what we do have is we have this POI folder. So, and the points of interest is really how we do this sort of stuff on a navigator as opposed to a normal GPS. So just note that the, the directory POI is at the moment empty. So we go over here and we go File, uh, Export, and we say Garmin POI file. Now, if we say use defaults, which is what normally comes up, that's where it's going to go to. So that folder was, you know, E drive Garmin POI, so that's the right place, E drive Garmin POI. Geo Geocaches.gpi, it's got to be a .gpi file, that's the extension you've got to have. Uh, forget this thing here. But if you just select use defaults, which most people will do, the actual primary name that you're going to see these cases listed as on your Garmin Nuvi is their smart name. So looking over to the right there, Moscow, Green Hill, uh, Kalmanat, Eastern, you know, all the, these are the smart names, right? Now let's just have a look at this one down here, Pasco P1. So that's Pasco Pedal Hash 1. So if you're, if you use defaults and it's going to choose smart name by default as the main entry in your Garmin Nuvi, when you say let's go to this next cache, you're going to need to say go to Pasco P1 as opposed to Pasco Pedal 1. So I had a bit of a play around with it, and what I did is I unticked that, and I just changed the name there to, or sorry, from smart just to name. So I'm basically using the full, uh, the full geocache name, which is of course longer, but I, I just think it makes more sense. Now in here under this extra field, if you put hint, it actually goes into the Garmin POI file in the field that the telephone number would normally go in. So for example, on the Garmin Nuvi you can have a, a point of interest which is the local police station for example and then you can associate a telephone number with it so if you can say go to the local police station and at the same time ring it on the telephone so you have this concept of adding another couple of entries so if you want to put the hint in um, it actually goes under the telephone entry which looks a little bit counterintuitive when you're seeing it on the uh, on the Garmin Nuvi but I just wanted to explain how that sort of works so we click generate goes through, does its magic, and it opens up a little uh, command window and I think runs the GPS Babel process in the back end, which is what it just did then. And if we click over to here, we can see that our file there, geocases.gpi, is created. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do is basically, I always, I mean, you could just pull the cable out the back of the um, Garmin Nuvi, but I'm going to eject it just so it shuts the file system down properly. So we'll just go eject like that. Then when that's finished, I'll pull out my Garmin Nuvi. So once you've downloaded the POI file onto the Garmin Nuvi using GSAC, um, then what I've found is there's a couple of ways you can actually uh, go to the geocache. So click on where to, and what might seem logical I think is to go points of interest, I found you couldn't really get there that way. Uh, I didn't put too much work into it. But the way I found that you could get there okay was to go to Browse Map. And if you go Browse Map, interestingly enough, you scroll over to where you notice some geocaches. For example, you can see this cache here. Click on it and say Go. And then that will get you to it that way. Or well, the other way you can do it, and that doing that way you've got to use the GC number to get to it. Or if you do it this way, go where to, and then click on the there and go extras, custom points of interest, and then all your cases are listed. So they, see here they're listed by the actual full name, um, pools flooded into history. These here are, are waypoints, so um, like what, uh, what do you call them? So like stages of a multi case, for example. Um, so that's what they are, and you can not have those if you don't want them, but they probably come in handy because sometimes you go and do a geocache 
and there might be a waypoint listed which is a parking spot and that'll that's its waypoint code but if we go down to this one the daily stroll that has got information in there um, like the hint information you might recall I said that the hint information comes up as a phone number um, so you see that's the field that it uses it doesn't make sense but you know if you want to use uh, the actual NUVI to go to do the geocaching I guess you're going to want the hint but uh, I'm thinking most people are going to use the NUVI to navigate them to near the geocache and then use a proper GPS to do the last bit and once you've selected the one that you want um, you just click on go there you go, it takes you to it so that's how to do it with a Garmin movie.